Hello everyone, and welcome to our podcast channel. This is where we explore stories that leave a lasting impression with every moment, like the story of Marcus, a husband, who, after betrayal, finds hope and love with a woman who seemed like a stranger, but turned out to be his true companion. These aren't just stories, each episode is a journey deep into the soul, helping us realize the value of love and genuine relationships. Share your thoughts with us. If you ever stood at a crossroads between love and trust, which path would you choose? Before we dive into today's story, let us know in the comments where you're tuning in from. And if this is your first time here or you haven't subscribed yet, please support us by hitting that subscribe button. It truly means a lot to us. Thank you so much. Marcus leaned against the doorframe, hands heavy in his pockets, watching Tiffany through the thin gap of the doorway. The early morning light crept in, casting pale beams across the living room, and there she was packing with practiced efficiency. Her movements were quick and sure, almost rehearsed. It was like she was heading off to work, not setting off for a weekend in Los Angeles with her boss, Ryan. Their daughter, Emily, stood nearby, her gaze darting between her mother and father, silent but tense. She was barely 17, caught between two worlds still clinging to the family she knew but already sensing it unravel. A swirl of memories caught Marcus off guard, pulling him back in time. He remembered Tiffany's smile as she crossed the stage at their high school graduation, her hands slipping into his as they whispered plans for the future. They'd married young, full of dreams and untested promises. Now, watching her slip away, those promises felt like distant echoes, lost under the weight of the years and the silence that had grown between them. But silence was all he'd get now. He decided not to stop her, not to question her, not even when he'd received word from Rachel Ryan's wife that Tiffany had been unfaithful. Marcus's jaw clenched at the thought. It wasn't jealousy that kept him from speaking, nor anger, it was exhaustion. He'd spent months piecing together fragments of conversations, stolen glances, and the carefully hidden texts he'd glimpsed on her phone. All he'd ever get from Tiffany were denials. As he glanced over at Emily, he wondered if she already knew. Emily had always been observant, with eyes that could cut through to the truth. She seemed to feel his gaze and turned to him, her own eyes glistening. Dad, are you going to forgive her? She asked softly, her voice laced with a mixture of hope and dread. Marcus looked away, the words bitter in his throat. He shook his head slowly. Not this time, Em. The answer hung heavy in the air, solid as stone. Emily's face fell, her shoulders hunching slightly as she took in the reality of his words. Her mother's absence, the whispers of suspicion, and the invisible weight on her father's shoulders, it all became clearer. There's something you don't know, Marcus said, his voice barely above a whisper. He braced himself, feeling the ache of the secret he'd held for so long. Years ago, your mother had an affair with your Uncle Rick. It wasn't just one mistake, M. This, this has been going on for years in one way or another. Emily's eyes widened, and she took a step back, disbelief painted across her face. Mom and Uncle Rick. Her voice trembled with shock and hurt. Marcus nodded, the weight of the confession lifting only slightly from his shoulders. He'd carried it alone for too long, but now the truth was out in the open, raw and bare, like a wound exposed to air. Emily wrapped her arms around herself, her breath coming in shallow gasps. She looked down, fighting back tears, each breath a small shudder of pain. Why didn't you tell me sooner? I didn't want to hurt you, Marcus replied, his voice thick with regret. But sometimes the truth needs to come out, no matter how much it hurts. As they stood there, the faint hum of a car engine filled the silence. Through the window, Marcus saw Tiffany's car pull out of the driveway, her silhouette fading down the street and out of sight. He turned back to Emily, who was staring after the car, her expression a mix of anger, confusion, and hurt. He placed a comforting hand on her shoulder, feeling the strength in her but knowing that she'd been forced to grow up too fast. Together, they watched the empty road, and though their family was fractured, there was a quiet, unspoken promise between them. Marcus squeezed her shoulder gently. He might have lost Tiffany, but he wouldn't lose his daughter. Not now, not ever. As the days passed, Marcus found himself haunted by old memories, the edges sharpened by recent wounds. It was hard to believe that Tiffany, the girl he'd once sworn his life to, had drifted so far into someone else's arms. The revelation of her betrayal had shaken him, but it wasn't until he drove out to meet his brother Rick that the past came fully into focus. The fishing spot they'd chosen was familiar, tucked away on the edge of the lake where they'd spent countless afternoons as boys. Marcus saw Rick's truck already parked, 
its old paint peeling, a relic from simpler times. He approached slowly, each step weighted by the memory of betrayal. Rick stood by the shore, his gaze fixed on the water, as if it held answers he'd been seeking for years. Hearing Marcus's approach, he turned, his face shadowed by regret. Hey Marcus, Rick greeted him, voice rough and weary. Didn't think you'd ever want to see me here again. Marcus took a breath, his fingers digging into his pockets as he struggled to contain the bitterness rising in his chest. I'm not here to reminisce, Rick. I'm here because it's time we face the truth. No more hiding. No more pretending it didn't happen. Rick's shoulders slumped as he nodded, his face clouded with shame. You're right. I should have said something years ago. I, I'm sorry, Marcus. What I did, it's unforgivable. There was a long pause, both men lost in the silence. Finally, Marcus broke it, his voice low but steady. Do you know what it's like to look at someone every day and wonder if you were ever enough for them? If everything you built together was just pretend? Rick's jaw clenched, his face tightening as he wrestled with his own guilt. I was weak. Marcus. I knew it was wrong, but I didn't stop. I let my own feelings get in the way of what mattered. I failed you. I know that. The words hung heavy between them, but Marcus found a strange relief in finally speaking openly. For years, he'd held onto his anger in silence, the betrayal and unspoken wound. Now, seeing the regret in his brother's eyes, he felt a flicker of something unexpected, a small spark of release. I can't say I forgive you, Marcus said, voice thick with restrained emotion but maybe it's time to let the past go. Maybe that's the only way we both find any peace. Rick swallowed hard, nodding. Thank you, Marcus, for coming out here, for hearing me out. They sat side by side on the rocky shore, the sun sinking low over the lake, casting a golden glow across the water. A few minutes passed, quiet but not uncomfortable as they each sipped from a flask Rick had brought. The burn of whiskey settled in Marcus's throat, a grounding warmth that softened the edges of his pain. You know, Rick said, breaking the silence for what it's worth, I'm glad you're moving on. Rachel seems like a good woman. She deserves a chance, and so do you. Marcus glanced at Rick, surprised by the mention. Rachel had been an unexpected Ollie, a friend who understood the kind of pain he carried because she was carrying it herself. She had stood by his side as his suspicions turned into confirmations, supporting him when he felt like he was falling apart. And now, there was a connection between them one built not on revenge, but understanding. Rachel, she's been there for me in ways I didn't expect, Marcus admitted, his gaze drifting back to the lake. But it's still hard. I'm not sure I'm ready to trust again. Rick nodded, a sad smile crossing his face. Trust takes time. You don't have to rush. Just let yourself heal. They sat in shared silence once more, the quiet wrapping around them, healing in its own way. For the first time in a long time, Marcus felt the weight of the past beginning to lift. The anger was still there, but its edges had softened. And in that moment, sitting beside the brother who'd hurt him, he realized that letting go was the first step to finding himself again. As they watched the sun slip beneath the horizon, Marcus knew he was ready to face whatever lay ahead. Tiffany, Ryan, the life he'd once had, it was all part of his past now. And with Rachel, perhaps he could begin to build a future. After the heavy talk with Rick, Marcus returned home feeling raw but strangely lighter. The conversation had left him drained, Yet a small piece of him felt freed from the past. That night, he couldn't shake thoughts of Rachel. She'd been a lifeline in his storm, steady and empathetic. And now, he was about to see her again. A few days later, they met at a cozy restaurant on the edge of town, a quiet place with dim lighting and soft jazz playing in the background. Rachel was already seated, her dark hair framing her face as she scanned the menu. She looked up when Marcus approached, and her smile was warm, a gentle reassurance he'd come to cherish. Hey Marcus, she greeted, setting down her menu. Thanks for meeting me. I know things have been complicated. He took a seat across from her, nodding. Complicated's a good word for it, he replied with a hint of a smile. But seeing you here makes it feel a little less so. Rachel's expression softened, and for a moment, they both sat in comfortable silence. There was no rush, no pressure. She understood what he'd been through, she was going through it too, after all. I thought you should know, she said gently. I've hired a private investigator. I needed to be sure to get proof of Ryan's behavior for my own peace of mind. Marcus looked at her, surprised but impressed. He knew the courage it took to face the truth, even if it hurt. Rachel, that's brave of you. It's one thing to suspect, but to have it confirmed, he paused choosing his words carefully. It's not easy. Um. She nodded, 
glancing down as if stealing herself. I wanted you to know because, well, because you're part of this now. And if there's anything you want me to look into, anything that could help you too, just say the word. The offer touched him. For so long, he'd felt like he was carrying the weight alone, protecting his family's secrets, hiding his own pain. But here was someone offering to shoulder it with him, someone who didn't need explanations. Thank you, Rachel. Really, he said, his voice low but sincere. But right now, just having someone to talk to, it's enough. They shared a quiet smile, and the warmth in her eyes gave him a sense of relief he hadn't felt in years. As they ate, conversation flowed naturally, shifting between lighter topics and the darker threads of their shared struggles. At one point, they found themselves laughing, and it felt so foreign yet so right to Marcus, like a small piece of his old self had come back to life. Rachel noticed it too, and with a playful smile, she leaned forward. I don't think I've seen you smile like that before, she teased gently. Emily would be thrilled. Marcus chuckled, feeling a blush creep up his neck. Emily, she's been teasing me about you, actually, he admitted with a smirk. She says I'm finally getting a new girlfriend. Rachel laughed, her eyes twinkling. Well, it's nice to know I have her approval. There was a warmth to her laughter, a soft, genuine light that seemed to make the restaurant's dim ambience glow. Honestly, Marcus, she's right, you deserve to feel happy again. The words settled over him, like a quiet revelation. Happy it was something he hadn't allowed himself to think about, not in a long time. He'd been so wrapped up in his role as a father, a betrayed husband, a man burdened by mistakes and regrets, that he'd forgotten what it felt like to just be himself. They lingered over coffee, talking late into the evening, sharing stories, dreams, even a few confessions that felt safe in the quiet space between them. When it was time to leave, Marcus walked Rachel to her car, the cool night air sharp but refreshing. They stood by her car door, the silence between them filled with unspoken words. Thank you for tonight, he said, meeting her gaze. I didn't realize how much I needed this. Rachel smiled, reaching out to gently touch his arm. You're not alone in this, Marcus. Remember that. That. He watched her drive away, her taillights fading into the darkness. As he stood there, he felt a mix of emotions swirling within him relief, gratitude, and maybe even the smallest hint of hope. For the first time since Tiffany's betrayal, Marcus felt as if he had something to look forward to. He wasn't certain of what lay ahead, but he knew he wasn't walking the path alone. As he headed home, he found himself smiling again, the echoes of Rachel's laughter lingering in his mind. Emily noticed it too when he walked through the door, raising an eyebrow with a knowing grin. Dad, she teased, I don't think I've seen you this happy in years. He chuckled, ruffling her hair. You might be right, Em. You just might be right. In that moment, Marcus felt a shift, a new beginning. And as he looked at his daughter, he knew that they both deserved a chance at happiness, not just in a distant someday, but in the here and now. A few weeks after their dinner, life started to settle into a steady rhythm for Marcus. He found solace in the simple routines of home, the warmth of Emily's presence, and the budding friendship maybe even something more with Rachel. But that calm was shattered one evening when his phone buzzed with a message from Rachel. Marcus, I need to show you something. Can you come over? His heart pounded as he drove to her house, a mixture of dread and resignation weighing on him. Deep down, he knew what Rachel had found. She had spoken of the detective she'd hired, and now she finally had the evidence. When he arrived, Rachel met him at the door, her face tense. She didn't say much, only led him to her living room, where a laptop sat open on the coffee table. She gestured for him to sit beside her, and with a steadying breath, she clicked play on a video. The footage was grainy but unmistakable. There was Tiffany, his wife, laughing in the arms of another man. The timestamp showed it was recent, just days ago. She looked carefree, without a hint of guilt or regret. Next to her, Ryan leaned in close, whispering something that made her smile. They looked at ease, as if they had nothing to hide, like they were simply enjoying a weekend getaway, without a thought for the families they were betraying. The video played on, each second feeling like a sharp blow. Marcus clenched his fists, his jaw tightening as he watched, a slow burning anger mixing with the hollow ache of betrayal. He'd suspected it, even known it deep down, but seeing it laid bare was something else entirely. Rachel placed a gentle hand on his shoulder, grounding him. I know this isn't easy, she said softly, her own voice tinged with the same pain. I've watched it a dozen times, trying to make sense of it, but... There's no sense to make, Marcus replied, his voice low and cold. This, this is who they are. He glanced over at Rachel, seeing his own hurt mirrored in her eyes. They were both victims of the same deception, 
and in that moment, he felt a powerful sense of solidarity. She was more than just someone who understood, she was a partner in this painful truth. We're done with Tiffany, he murmured, echoing the resolution building within him. It was a finality he hadn't fully accepted until now. There was no going back, no repairing what had been shattered. He could feel it settle in him, a quiet determination replacing the ache. As he left Rachel's house, he felt the weight of the video pressing down on him, but it wasn't a burden he had to carry alone. The next day, he sat down with Emily Cole and Lloyd, determined to let them see the truth for themselves. It was a choice he hadn't made lightly, but they deserved honesty, just as he had. The boys were quiet as they watched the video, their faces a mixture of shock, sadness, and anger. Emily stood by her brothers, her gaze focused and unwavering. When the video ended, Lloyd was the first to speak, his voice tinged with bitterness. So, all this time, she was lying to us. Yes, Marcus said, his voice firm but calm. She wasn't just betraying me, she betrayed all of us. And we deserve better than this. Emily nodded, a fierce look in her eyes. She thought she could do this without anyone noticing. She thought we'd all just keep believing her lies. Marcus felt a swell of pride in his daughter, seeing the strength in her, the resilience. They were all wounded, yes, but they weren't broken. Not by a long shot. From now on, we focus on us, Marcus said, addressing his children. We move forward together. No more lies, no more pretending. They all nodded in agreement, a sense of unity settling over them. For the first time, Marcus felt a glimmer of hope for the future, a future free from the weight of Tiffany's deceit. After the conversation with his children, Marcus took one last step to sever the connection with Tiffany. He and Emily blocked her number, a small but symbolic act of closure. It was a final barrier, a boundary he knew he needed to heal and move forward. As they sat together that evening, Emily gave her father a reassuring smile. We're going to be okay, Dad. And Marcus believed her. For the first time in a long time, he truly believed they would be okay. The days following their final closure with Tiffany brought a sense of calm to Marcus's home. The air felt lighter, and while traces of sadness remained, there was also a budding sense of possibility. Marcus found himself spending more time with Rachel, their conversations deepening with each encounter. She was no longer just an ally in his struggle, she had become someone he genuinely cared about. One afternoon, Marcus invited Rachel over for dinner, wanting to create a quiet evening for just the two of them. Emily had been teasing him relentlessly about it, saying he was finally starting to look happier. And perhaps she was right. Rachel's presence brought warmth to his life in ways he hadn't realized he needed. As Rachel arrived, Marcus greeted her at the door, feeling a strange blend of nervousness and excitement. She looked radiant in the soft glow of the evening light, her smile warm and welcoming. It felt like a fresh start, a rare gift after all they'd endured. They shared a simple dinner together, filled with laughter and ease. Marcus couldn't remember the last time he felt so relaxed, so content. The walls that he'd built around his heart were slowly coming down, piece by piece, and he found himself drawn to her honesty, her kindness and her ability to find humor, even in life's darkest moments. After dinner, they moved to the porch where the night air was cool and calming. Stars dotted the sky, casting a gentle light over the quiet neighborhood. Marcus handed Rachel a mug of tea and they sat side by side, the comfortable silence between them deepening their connection. You know, Rachel said, her voice soft, I didn't think I'd be able to trust anyone again. After everything with Ryan, I felt like I'd lost a part of myself. Marcus looked at her, seeing his own journey reflected in her words. I know what you mean. For a long time, I didn't believe I'd be able to let anyone in again. But with you, it feels different like we're building something real. She glanced over at him, a gentle smile playing on her lips. Marcus, I never expected to feel this way either. But here we are, healing together. The vulnerability in her eyes mirrored his own, and without thinking, he reached out, taking her hand in his. It was a simple gesture, but it carried a world of meaning. They'd both been hurt, betrayed by people they trusted. And yet here they were, finding comfort in each other's presence. If you find it interesting, please comment number two. If it is not interesting, please press number one so we can fix the content to be better and better. As they sat in the quiet glow of the evening, Rachel leaned her head against Marcus's shoulder, the moment both tender and grounding. He felt a warmth in his chest, a sense of peace that had been missing for so long. It was more than just companionship. It was the start of something new, something that had grown slowly and quietly, like a seed taking root in the soil. Rachel's voice broke the silence, soft and thoughtful. Marcus, what would you think about building a life together? Not just healing side by side, but really moving forward. 
He took a deep breath, her question settling over him with a gentle weight. It was a question he hadn't dared to ask himself, but hearing her say it felt right. Rachel, I'd like that. I'd like that very much. Their hands entwined, they sat there under the stars, feeling the promise of a future filled with hope and healing. There was no rush, no urgency. They both understood the importance of taking it slow, letting their relationship grow naturally, unforced. But in that quiet moment, Marcus knew that Rachel was no longer just a friend. She was becoming part of his family, part of his heart. When Rachel finally left that evening, Marcus stood by the door, watching her taillights disappear down the road. Inside, Emily greeted him with a knowing grin, her eyes bright with the thrill of seeing her father smile again. So, she teased, leaning against the kitchen counter, is Rachel going to be around more often? Marcus chuckled, feeling warmth spread through him. Yeah, Em, I think she will be. As he closed the door that night, Marcus felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. The broken pieces of his life were coming together, not in the way he'd planned, but in a way that felt whole, genuine. He knew there would still be challenges, lingering shadows from the past, but with Rachel by his side, he felt ready to face whatever came next. Together, they would build something new, a life filled with laughter, honesty, and trust. And as he drifted off to sleep that night, Marcus felt a peaceful certainty that he was finally where he was meant to be. As the weeks passed, Marcus's connection with Rachel grew stronger, weaving seamlessly into his life. What started as a friendship built on shared pain had blossomed into something real and fulfilling. Rachel had become a steady presence, not only in Marcus's life, but in Emily's as well. They felt like a family, a family that had chosen each other. One evening, after dinner at Rachel's home, Marcus watched her daughters, Ella and Mia, playing in the yard with Emily. The laughter and joy they shared filled him with a sense of contentment he hadn't felt in years. Seeing Emily bond so effortlessly with Rachel's daughters was a quiet affirmation that their lives were merging in a way that felt right, natural. Rachel joined him, standing by his side with a soft smile as they watched the children play. They're getting along so well, she remarked, her voice filled with warmth. It's amazing how quickly they've connected. Marcus nodded, a gentle smile spreading across his face. It feels like they've been sisters all along, like they were meant to find each other. Rachel glanced at him, her gaze tender and hopeful. I've been thinking, Marcus, about the future. About us. The girls have been asking questions and I think it's time we talk about what comes next. The sincerity in her voice caught Marcus off guard, but he felt a thrill of excitement at the thought. He'd been considering the same thing, wondering what it would mean to truly commit to Rachel and her daughters. He took a deep breath, letting his hand find hers as they stood side by side. Rachel, he said, his voice steady. I want to be a part of this family, all of it. I've been thinking, if you're open to it, I'd like to adopt Ella and Mia. I want to give them my name, and I want them to know that they're truly loved, that they're part of something lasting. Her eyes filled with tears, and she squeezed his hand, a smile breaking through as she nodded. Marcus, they would be so lucky to have you as their father. And I know they already see you that way. They stayed close, letting the promise of their future sink in, feeling the depth of what this decision meant for both of them. It wasn't just a commitment to each other, it was a commitment to build a life together, with all its joys and challenges, a life bound by love and trust. In the following days, Marcus started the adoption process, reaching out to his lawyer and gathering the necessary paperwork. It was a journey he wanted to complete not just for himself, but for Rachel and her daughters. He wanted them to feel the stability, the security of a family they could depend on. One afternoon, as he was finishing up some forms at the dining table, Emily walked in, her eyes curious. Dad, she began, are you really going to adopt Ella and Mia? Marcus looked up at her, a gentle smile on his face. Yes, Em, I am. I want them to know they're a part of this family, that they're loved, just like you. Emily's eyes softened and she sat beside him, taking his hand. I think it's amazing. They're lucky to have you, Dad. And I'm lucky too. Her words filled him with gratitude and he felt a swell of pride for the young woman Emily had become strong, compassionate, and understanding. He knew that whatever lay ahead, they would face it together as a family. The day he signed the final adoption papers, Rachel and her daughters joined Marcus and Emily for a small celebration. They gathered in his living room, sharing stories, laughter, and promises of the new life they were building together. As they raised their glasses, Marcus looked around at the faces he loved. Ella and Mia looked at him with wide, trusting eyes and he felt the weight of the commitment he'd made to them. It was no small thing to step into this role, but he knew it was the right choice. To family he toasted, his voice filled with warmth, to new beginnings.
Rachel's hand slipped into his, her eyes brimming with tears of happiness. To family, she echoed, smiling up at him. They all clinked glasses, the room filling with laughter and the soft glow of a fresh start. As they stood together, Marcus felt a quiet joy settle in his heart. This was the family he'd fought for, the family he'd found through loss and love. And for the first time, he knew that they had all come home. A week after the adoption was finalized, Marcus received an unexpected call from Ryan. He hadn't spoken to Ryan directly since discovering his betrayal, and now, hearing his voice on the line stirred an old anger. But Marcus had changed, strengthened by the love and resilience he'd found in Rachel and their children. He was ready to confront Ryan, to put the past behind him once and for all. They agreed to meet at a coffee shop downtown. As Marcus entered, he spotted Ryan seated at a corner table, his face hard but slightly hesitant, as if he wasn't entirely sure what he was here to accomplish. Marcus took a deep breath, squared his shoulders, and walked over, greeting him with a nod. Ryan glanced up, an air of discomfort around him. Thanks for meeting me, Marcus, he said, forcing a polite smile. Marcus settled into his chair, his gaze steady. What do you want, Ryan? Ryan fidgeted, his fingers tapping lightly against his coffee cup. I've heard that you're adopting Ella and Mia, he began, his voice laced with something that Marcus couldn't quite place, perhaps a mix of resentment and defeat. Yes, I am, Marcus replied firmly. They're part of my family now. Rachel and I are giving them the stability and love they deserve. Ryan's expression shifted, a flicker of frustration crossing his face. Look, I'm still their father. You can't just erase me from their lives. Marcus met his gaze with calm determination. Ryan, I'm not erasing anyone. But let's be clear those girls need someone they can rely on. Someone who won't walk away when things get tough. I'm stepping into that role because I care about them. I want to give them a stable home. A safe place where they feel loved and protected. Ryan scoffed, shaking his head. You think you're better than me. That you're some kind of hero because you're playing dad to kids that aren't yours. Marcus held his ground, refusing to be baited. It's not about being better, Ryan. It's about doing right by them. You had your chance to be there for them, but you chose a different path. And now I'm choosing to be there. This isn't about you or me, it's about what's best for them. Ryan's shoulders slumped slightly, the fight draining from him. He looked away, a shadow of regret crossing his face. So that's it. Then, you take over, and I'm just out? Marcus softened, sensing the weight of Ryan's own guilt. Ryan, if you want to be part of their lives, that's up to you. But if you do, it has to be on their terms, not yours. You'll have to earn their trust, their respect. And that won't happen by undermining what Rachel and I are building. It'll only happen if you're truly committed to being there for them. Ryan nodded slowly, absorbing the truth in Marcus's words. The two men sat in silence for a moment, the tension easing as the reality of their choices settled over them. Finally, Ryan cleared his throat. I get it. I made mistakes. A lot of them. And maybe it's too late to fix them. He looked up, his eyes meeting Marcus's with a glimmer of humility. I won't get in your way. If adopting them is what you and Rachel want, then I'll respect that. Marcus nodded, feeling a sense of closure. Thank you, Ryan. I hope you find a way to make peace with everything. And if you do, maybe one day you'll have a real place in their lives again. They exchanged a final nod, a silent acknowledgement of the choices they'd made and the paths they'd chosen. As Marcus rose to leave, he felt an unexpected lightness in his chest. The past was behind him now, and there was nothing holding him back from embracing the future he'd built with Rachel and their children. When he arrived home, Rachel greeted him with a warm smile, her eyes filled with gentle understanding. She knew what that meeting had meant, and the strength it had taken to face the man who had once been part of their shared hurt. It's done, Marcus said softly, pulling her into a close embrace. He understands now. This family, it's ours, fully and completely. Rachel rested her head against his chest, a smile on her lips. Then let's move forward. Together. Ah. Uh. As they stood there, holding each other, Marcus felt an unshakable sense of peace. His past, once a source of pain, had led him to this new beginning. And with Rachel by his side, he knew he was finally where he belonged in a family built on love, trust, and a shared commitment to a better tomorrow. As autumn settled in, Marcus and Rachel decided it was time to take the final step towards solidifying their new life together. They set a date for their wedding, a small and intimate ceremony with just close family and friends. It wasn't about grand gestures or elaborate plans, it was about love, commitment, and the family they'd chosen to build. The morning of the wedding dawned crisp and clear, with a kind of golden light that made everything seem a little more magical. Marcus stood in front of the mirror, 
adjusting his tie with a mix of anticipation and nerves. He could hardly believe how far he'd come, from the wreckage of a broken marriage to this moment, where he was about to marry a woman who had shown him the true meaning of love and resilience. A knock at the door pulled him from his thoughts and Emily peeked in, a bright smile lighting up her face. She wore a soft lavender dress, her hair pulled back elegantly. Dad, you look amazing, she said, stepping in and straightening his tie with a proud smile. I can't believe you're getting married today. Marcus chuckled, taking her hand. Neither can I, honestly. But I wouldn't be here without you. Em, you've been my rock through all of this. Emily's eyes glistened, and she hugged him tightly. You deserve this happiness, Dad. We both do. He hugged her back, feeling a surge of gratitude. When they pulled apart, he saw her holding back tears, and he knew they shared an unspoken understanding. They'd been through so much together, and now they were finally on the other side, about to begin a beautiful new chapter. The ceremony was held in a small clearing by the lake, surrounded by golden leaves and the soft hum of nature. Rachel stood at the end of the aisle, her daughters Ella and Mia by her side, their dresses matching Emily's. As Marcus watched them walk down the aisle, he felt a swell of emotion so profound that he had to steady himself. Rachel looked radiant, her eyes filled with the same love and hope he felt. When Rachel reached him, they shared a look that spoke volumes. The efficient began, but Marcus could barely hear the words. All he could focus on was Rachel, the woman who had come into his life when he needed it most, who had brought light and laughter into his world again. They exchanged vows that spoke of resilience, forgiveness, and the promise to protect the family they had created together. As they held each other's hands, Marcus felt the weight of those words settle into his heart, grounding him, filling him with purpose. I promise to stand by you, Marcus said, his voice steady despite the emotion in his chest. Through every joy and every sorrow, to love and protect this family with everything I have. Rachel's eyes glistened with tears as she echoed his words. I promise to cherish you, to stand with you in all that we face. We've come through so much, and together we'll make a beautiful life. When they exchanged rings, a gentle cheer rose from their small group of family and friends. Marcus slipped the ring onto Rachel's finger, feeling the full weight of commitment, not as a burden, but as a privilege. She was his partner, his best friend, the love he hadn't known he was waiting for. They kissed, sealing their vows, and the guests cheered louder. Emily, Ella, and Mia rushed forward, wrapping them both in a tight embrace, and for a moment, they were a tangle of laughter and happy tears. Later, as they celebrated under a canopy of stars, Marcus felt a warmth that seemed to glow from within. He watched Rachel laugh with the girls, their daughters, and knew he was exactly where he was meant to be. The night was filled with stories, toasts, and gentle laughter. Friends and family shared in their joy, celebrating not just a wedding, but a second chance for two people who had found each other in the most unlikely of circumstances. Emily raised her glass, her eyes sparkling. To Dad and Rachel, she toasted. To love, family, and new beginnings. Marcus raised his glass, his gaze meeting Rachel's across the table. To family, he echoed, his heart full. As the night wore on, Marcus and Rachel found a quiet moment together, standing hand in hand, watching the stars reflected in the lake. He looked at her, knowing that this was only the beginning. Ready for forever? He asked, a gentle smile on his lips. Rachel nodded, her eyes filled with the same unwavering love he felt. With you? Always. And as they stood there, surrounded by the warmth of their family and friends, Marcus felt an overwhelming sense of peace. This was his forever, and it was more beautiful than anything he could have imagined. As the months passed, life settled into a steady rhythm for Marcus and Rachel. They'd found a peaceful balance, blending their families and establishing traditions that made their house feel like home. The laughter of their daughters filled each room, and with each passing day, their lives grew more intertwined, more complete. One chilly Saturday morning, Marcus found himself in the kitchen, flipping pancakes while the girls crowded around him, eagerly awaiting breakfast. Emily, Ella, and Mia were chattering about their plans for the day, their voices mingling in a melody of excitement and joy. It was a simple scene, but one that filled Marcus with a deep sense of fulfillment. Rachel walked in, her hair still tousled from sleep, wrapping a warm sweater around her shoulders. She smiled as she took in the sight of her family, the love of her life busy at the stove, the girls in their pajamas, and the smell of coffee filling the room. Marcus caught her gaze and winked, feeling a swell of warmth that only she could ignite. Good morning, beautiful, he said, flipping a pancake with a bit of extra flair. 
The girls giggled, and Rachel rolled her eyes with a smile. Good morning, chef, she teased, coming over to kiss him on the cheek. This place is starting to feel like a diner on the weekends. Marcus chuckled, enjoying the cozy chaos around them. Well, I aim to please, he said, sliding a pancake onto Ella's plate, then Mia's, and finally Emily's. And this diner has a no-complaints policy, just so you all know. As they dug into their breakfast, the warmth of family wrapped around them like a blanket. They shared stories, laughed, and even debated over who made the best pancake shapes. It was a small ritual, but one that had come to mean everything to them. Later that afternoon, they bundled up and went for a hike through the nearby woods, their breath visible in the crisp autumn air. The girls ran ahead, kicking up leaves and daring each other to race down the trail, their laughter echoing through the trees. Marcus and Rachel walked behind them, hands clasped together, talking about everything and nothing, savoring the quiet moments in between the busyness of life. Halfway up the trail, they found a small clearing where they decided to rest. Marcus spread out a blanket, and they all settled down, catching their breath and sipping hot chocolate from thermoses. The sky above was a bright, endless blue, and the sun filtered through the trees, casting dappled light over them. Mom, Dad, Mia piped up, looking between Marcus and Rachel, can we do this every year? Make it a family tradition? Rachel's eyes softened, and she glanced over at Marcus, who smiled and nodded. Of course we can, sweetheart. This is our tradition now. Um. Emily leaned back against Marcus's shoulder, content. I like it too. It feels right. Rachel reached over and squeezed Marcus's hand, her eyes reflecting the same peace he felt. I think we've found our place, she said softly, her voice barely above a whisper. Marcus smiled, feeling his heart swell with gratitude. Yeah, we have. The rest of the afternoon passed in a gentle rhythm. They walked, explored, and pointed out birds and deer tracks along the way. By the time they made their way back to the car, the girls were exhausted, happily recounting their favorite parts of the day as they climbed into the back seat. On the drive home, Rachel rested her head on Marcus's shoulder, and he could feel the contentment radiating from her. He dreamed of having a family like this, a family held together by love and resilience, and now he was living that dream every day. As they pulled into the driveway, the girls tumbled out, laughing and racing each other to the door. Marcus and Rachel followed, lingering a moment by the car, taking in the sight of their home, filled with memories and the promise of many more. Rachel looked up at him, her eyes shining. Thank you, Marcus, she said, her voice full of emotion, for everything, for choosing this life with me. He wrapped his arms around her, pulling her close. I wouldn't have it any other way, Rachel. This is our life now, and it's exactly where I want to be. They stood together, watching as the girls turned back to wave them in, their laughter carrying through the crisp evening air. And as they stepped inside, hand in hand, Marcus knew that they had found something rare and precious, a love built on trust, a family woven together by choice, and a future brimming with hope. This was their forever, and it was only just beginning. Years slipped by like pages turning in a cherished book, each chapter filled with laughter, love, and the subtle beauty of everyday life. Marcus and Rachel's family grew stronger, woven together through traditions, shared dreams, and the quiet moments that defined them. On a warm summer evening, the whole family gathered in the backyard for a special occasion, Marcus's birthday. The air was filled with the smell of barbecue, laughter echoing as the girls, now young women, vibrant and full of life, teased their dad about getting older. Marcus stood by the grill, flipping burgers with a smirk as he listened to their banter. Emily had recently graduated from college and was starting her career, Ella was in her sophomore year studying environmental science, and Mia was preparing for her high school senior year, excited and anxious for the journey ahead. Rachel came up behind Marcus, slipping her arms around him, resting her chin on his shoulder. You're looking pretty good for a man your age, she teased, giving him a playful squeeze. He chuckled, leaning back against her. I'll take that as a compliment, he replied, grinning. You're not so bad yourself. As they shared a quiet moment, watching the girls set up the table with bright candles, and a bouquet of wildflowers they'd picked earlier, Marcus felt an overwhelming sense of pride and gratitude. He'd once thought his life had been shattered beyond repair. Yet here he was, surrounded by a family that he loved more than he ever thought possible. Dinner was lively, filled with stories and memories, each voice adding to the vibrant tapestry of their lives. As the evening darkened, Mia suggested a family tradition they'd begun a few years ago, everyone would share something they were grateful for. It was a small ritual that had brought them closer, 
reminding them to appreciate the love they shared. Emily was the first to speak, her voice filled with sincerity. I'm grateful for this family for everything you've all done for me. Dad, you've been my rock. Mom, Rachel, you've shown me so much about kindness and strength. And you, Ella and Mia, you're my sisters in every way that matters. I love you all. Rachel's eyes shimmered as she reached across the table, taking Emily's hand. You're a gift, Emily. Watching you grow into the woman you are today has been one of the greatest joys of my life. Ella and Mia added their own words, each expressing gratitude for their blended family, the love that had carried them through, and the memories they continued to make together. When it was Marcus's turn, he looked around the table, feeling the weight of their journey, all the highs and lows that had led them to this moment. I'm grateful for all of you, he said, his voice steady but thick with emotion. This family, this life we've built together, it's everything I could have hoped for and more. I used to think I was broken, that I'd lost my chance at happiness. But you all showed me that love can be rebuilt, stronger and more beautiful than before. He paused, meeting each of their eyes. Thank you for letting me be your father, for trusting me, and for filling my life with so much joy. Rachel leaned over, kissing him softly, their connection as strong as ever. The girls cheered, laughing and teasing them as they'd done a thousand times before. The night continued with music, dancing, and the quiet understanding that they were all part of something extraordinary. As the stars began to dot the sky, Marcus took a moment alone, looking out over the backyard where they had spent so many precious evenings. Rachel joined him, slipping her hand into his, and together they watched the girls laugh and talk by the fire pit. Rachel looked up at him, her eyes filled with the same love he'd fallen for all those years ago. We did it, didn't we? She murmured, her voice soft but filled with pride. He nodded, pulling her close. Yes, we did. And it's more than I ever dreamed. As they stood there, wrapped in the warmth of the summer night and the life they had created, Marcus knew that this was the legacy he would leave behind not just a family, but a foundation of love, resilience, and hope. It was a story he would never stop telling, a story of second chances and the beauty of a life rebuilt. And as the laughter of their daughters filled the air, he felt an unshakable peace settle in his heart, knowing that the best chapters were yet to come. This was their forever, and it was perfect in every way.